For the money, the Canon R10 is one of the best cameras you can buy right now. But the one thing that is almost always going to let this camera down is the kit lens. And don't get me wrong, for $100, I do strongly recommend everybody buys the kit lens, and I bought the kit lens with my Canon R10 as well. It is a lightweight lens, it's very small, it's got great autofocus, it's got image stabilization, so it has a whole bunch going for it, and you're not gonna get that combination of things for $100 anywhere else. So I think you should buy the kit lens. But if you are looking to get the most out of this camera and get the highest image quality, both in photo and video, that is not going to be happening with this lens. This is a lens that is cheap and convenient, not a lens that is very good. And to that end, I wondered what would the images out of this camera look like if I put a Hollywood cinema lens on the Canon R10. And I was recently sent out this cinema lens by Seven Artisans. They're a company that makes affordable lenses. And this is an affordable cinema lens like you might use in Hollywood on a big budget production. They make these lenses for sort of independent filmmakers and people just starting out when you really can't afford anything better. And the price of this lens, if you were going to buy the kit lens separately on its own, the price of the kit lens and the price of the cinema lens are going to be very, very similar. And the image quality you are going to get out of the cinema lens compared to the kit lens are night and day. They are completely not even comparable. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice when you put this lens on and you look at the images is the sharpness and detail. I know everybody's obsessed with sharpness and detail. It doesn't get me quite as excited as other things, but this lens, if you are interested in sharpness and detail, this is going to render it just about as well as anything out there. And I will just throw on screen now, this is a close-up image my daughter took of my face and my God, this lens showed so much detail that I probably aged about 25 years in the 15 seconds that she took that video. It is scary how old I've gotten. What has happened? Anyways, do not use this lens for close-ups if you are old like me. Way too much sharpness and detail. If you're young like my daughter, it's fine. Look at this. I mean, that's beautiful. That's great. So... Good for young people, not for old people. The other thing you're gonna notice about this lens, comparing it to the kit lens, is the ability to get a blurry background. Now, this is important, whether it be photo or video, because using a blurry background or shallow depth of field effect is what we do to draw the viewer's eye to the subject in the frame. When we want everything to melt away behind them, and they want, we want them just to be completely focused on the subject. This is going to allow you to do that because it has what's called a T-stop of T2.0. Now, when it comes to cinema lenses, they are rated in T-stops. When it comes to photography lenses, they are rated in F-stops. These are very, very similar measurements. T-stops measure how much light hits the sensor. F-stops measures how big the opening is in the back of the lens. For the purpose of this video, I don't want to overly complicate it, but just think of a T2.0 lens as similar to an F2.0 lens. So this is going to allow you to get a blurry background. When we compare that to the kit lens, I think the kit lens, once it is at 45 millimeters, it's probably around F6.3 or something like that. Where this at 50 millimeters is T2.0 or similar to F2.0. So that means you're going to be able to get a significantly more blurry background. This is also going to get you better low light performance. It's going to get you more detail, cleaner images with less noise in low light. The kit lens is actually terrible for low light. I wouldn't even consider trying it in even the most mod modest low light situation. It is just no good for those purposes. And although people see the R7 as the cinematic video beast, I think the Canon R10 doesn't have to be the poor little brother. I think it can actually, for most people's purposes, produce cinematic video that is just as good for them as they would get out of the Canon R7. And that's because the Canon R7 is really designed and the way people look at it and the reason they talk about it being a great cinema camera is because it has log profile. This is a type of video that is often shot in professional video production, but then when you bring it into your computer, you have to edit the heck out of it to make it look like anything. 
With the Canon R10, all I've done here is I've just put it in the neutral picture profile. This is something you can do in the Canon R7 as well, but if you don't need that log profile, then just using a Canon R10 in the neutral picture profile, which is sort of a cinematic looking format straight out of the camera, I think for most people is absolutely just as good. So all the images you're seeing are just the neutral picture profile coming straight out of the camera. In some cases, I tweaked it. I just added a little bit of contrast or I added a little bit of color. But for the most part, this is the kind of images you're gonna get straight out of the camera using this lens. Now, importantly, this lens, like other cinema lenses, is designed to give you a bit more natural image. Photography lenses are, are really designed to give you a higher contrast punchy image, where cinema lenses are designed in general based on the way that the optics are designed and the coating that is used on those optics. They're more designed to give you a more neutral and natural looking image. So even before I tweaked the settings in the Canon R10, I just put the cinema lens on, I was immediately getting a very cinematic image. I mean, just changing the lens made a dramatic difference. So essentially what I've done by swapping the kit lens out to the cinema lens is I've just made this camera almost the opposite camera that it was before. With this kit lens, I've got something that is lightweight. This cinema lens is extremely heavy. With the kit lens, I've got something that's kind of cheaply built. The cinema lens is completely metal. With the kit lens, I've got really bulletproof autofocus. With the cinema lens, I have no autofocus at all. With the kit lens, I have image stabilization. With the cinema lens, I have no image stabilization. With the kit lens, I have some pretty poor image quality. With the cinema lens, I have incredible image quality. So these lenses are absolutely the opposite of each other. You've got one here, which is the most convenient option, and you've got the other one here, which gives you the highest quality image. So really, it's just up to you what you want to do with your camera. And the exciting thing about this, and this is the most important part of any interchangeable lens camera, is you can transform your camera by changing the lens. That's all you have to do to completely transform the images coming out of your camera. Now, if you want to transform the images coming out of your camera, but you don't wanna spend any money on a lens, I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is a tutorial I've done, and this will have some information in it that I am sure you have never seen before. And if you watch this video to the end, I guarantee you will be getting better photos and better videos than you are right now.